Members, I'm going to call on Mr. Medina, who is going to say a few words about Ms. Nora Campos. Mr. Medina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When I uh, arrived here four years ago, uh, not knowing anyone, I, I first met uh, Ms. Campos, but I, I, I made a mistake. I, I uh, addressed her as Norma Campos, and th that was my first encounter with Ms. Campos. And boy, did I never make that mistake again, because I got to find out the, uh, the spirit of Ms. Campos right away. And from then, we have been uh, great friends. Uh, we share a lot in common, actually, Ms. Campos and I do. We were both born in San Jose, California. Uh, Nora grew up in the barrio Sal Si Puedes, the same barrio in San Jose where Cesar Chavez uh, lived and grew up. Uh, we both share a passion for history. And Nora, in her time here in the assembly and in her time in the city council in San Jose, has worked tirelessly to preserve the history of Cesar Chavez and the farm workers in San Jose and for the state of California. Valuable history. It was a proud moment uh, for me to stand with Ms. Campos when she made the church where Fred Ross uh, worked out of, uh, the mentor for Cesar Chavez, when she made that a historical landmark. So, uh, you know, they use the phrase, a wise Latina. And certainly, uh, Nora Campos is that, a wise Latina. Her, her passion, her spirit, and her charm makes her a wise Latina. And so I would compare her to another wise Latina, Dolores Huerta. And I think that both of them have had a great influence in the state of California. Both of them will be long remembered. And I know that we have not heard the last of Ms. Nora Campos. I know that she has uh, a good future uh, ahead of her, and I am proud to have known her and to stand with her. Uh, I know that we will greatly miss her and uh, here on the assembly floor, and I know that I will as well. Thank you, Mr. Medina. Ms. Gonzalez, you are recognized. Thank you. Um, so uh, in life, I'm told that you're lucky if you have one real friend. And I think a lot of times up here, we're very lucky if we can count a colleague as a friend. And um, you all know I'm a crier, but uh, Nora, you've been uh, an incredible inspiration to me. I came here, you were um, the first person on this floor to support me before I came here. and. Um, really took me under your wing and became the big sister I never had. Your loyalty, your passion, your un unapologetic desire to do the most amount of good for the most amount of people has been a shining light for me and others to follow. You're a fantastic mom. Jack is a lucky, lucky kid. And um, the bills that you have been able to shepherd through this, including your equal pay bill yesterday, are historic. Whether it's farm workers, or women, or children, um, the work that you've done uh, is, is beyond something to be proud of. I can't imagine your constituents will ever find a fighter like you. And um, despite your petiteness, which always makes me look really, really big in pictures, um, I mean, I'm a big girl, but geez, uh, I look kind of like a monster next to you. Um, despite that, there is nobody, if I were in a dark alley um, and I, I needed to pick somebody to have by my side and, and that I knew wouldn't run no matter how hard it got, um, there'd be nobody but you that I would choose. You're, you're uh, incredible and um, I'm gonna have to find somebody else who eats ice cream while I drink a glass of wine at the Sheraton. Um, and, and I will miss you every morning on our walks, and uh, I know that we will be able to spend some time together when you get to the Senate, um, but hopefully you won't one day become like all of them. <laughs> distant, I meant distant. 
All my other friends in the Senate are a little distant. So um, good luck. And um, I'm so, so incredibly blessed to, to call you my friend. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Gibson. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise uh, today to also bid my friend farewell. Um, just as um, our previous colleague have said, when I first came to this house, um, I was greeted with a great infectious smile, and that was by Ms. Campos. Um, and I also made the mistake of calling, calling her Norma. Um, and was also corrected. I want to also simply say that her fight for not only civil rights, for women's rights, has certainly uh, will continue to echo in these halls on this floor. Um, her tremendous passion when she gets up and reflects and talks about her daddy. And I know that her father meant the world to her as a leader as a provider and someone that she can certainly look up to, um, not to mention her husband who's been and continued to fight for workers' rights throughout California. And I just know that Jack is going to grow up to um, take on that mantle. My mind goes back and wonder, what would I equate Ms. Norma, Nora Campos to? And that would simply be someone in the Bible, Deborah. Deborah was a nurse to Rebecca. And because you want to make people's lives better, you want to help those individuals, Frank Sinatra has a famous song, If I Can Just Help Somebody. And if also he also wrote a song, he did it his way. And you have done it your way since I've been in this house. Um, and continue to do just that, standing up for people all over, the least of these. And permission to read? Without objection. I found one of my favorite quotes, and this really embodies, I think, of you. And it's one of Dr. Martha King. And it reads, life begins to end the moment you start being silent about the things that matter. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. We will have to repent in this generation, not for the mere victor vile words of the action of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. There comes a time that silence is a form of betrayal. This one, you will never be guilty of this because you will stand up and let your voice be heard loud and clear. Whether it's on this floor or whether it's outside these, this, this building, you will stand up and you will speak truth to power. And that's the reason why I will always remember you, always stand by your side in a fight. And as my, co my colleague said, that if I'm in a fight, there's somebody who I want to stand next to me, and that's you. Congratulations on the new chapter you're getting ready to write in your future. Mr. Chu, you are recognized. Thank you, uh, Speaker and Member. Although I wasn't born in the same town, uh, the same city as Nora, but I'm probably the person in the house that knows her for the longest and her family. I know her when, before she was even running for the San Jose City Council the first term. So um, I have the honor to serve, serve with her on the San Jose City Council and the last two years in, in, in this uh, distinguished uh, uh, house of, of the assembly. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank her for her friendship and her uh, mentorship, both in the San Jose City Council as well as in the state assembly. Thank you, Nora. Mr. Dababne, you're recognized. Nora, I will say this, I rarely speak on issues like this, but I will say I will not miss anyone more than I will miss you. And often as a single guy, I get asked, what are you waiting for to Bob Nay? And who are you looking for? And what, what, when are you gonna find the perfect girl? And I say, if I find anyone half as amazing as Nora Campos, I would be married the next day. And Nora, I, I will tell you, 
You are truly like my slightly, just barely older sister that I never had. I value our friendship, and I will say you were like the liberal soul for me on many issues. It brought me onto the side where I should have been, but probably wouldn't have been without your convincing and your soft touch. And I will say this, this institution is better off for having you here the last six years. Our state is better off for having you here the last six years. And I am personally better off for having you here the last three years. Thank you so much, Nora. And members, Mr. Hernandez. Thank you very much. Nora, I want to also thank you for giving me the opportunity to work with you as a colleague over the last six years. I know that when we first met throughout our trail and our path into getting here, uh, I had a chance to share with you that I knew about you and I knew about your work in San Jose uh, for the years that I was serving as a local city council member in the San Gabriel Valley. And so I was very much looking forward to being your colleague because I knew about your drive, I knew about your passion, I knew about your love of community. And it's, it's been confirmed year in and year out uh, in the work that we've done here collectively as colleagues, as one body. And many of you have seen that uh, at times uh, we don't always agree. And I'm not talking about Nora and I, all of us, we don't always agree. Uh, but in those disagreements, you've always been uh, a calming presence for me. You've always been a mentor to me. You've always been a big sister that reminds me why we're here and the charge that voters have uh, called upon us to carry out. And I want to tell you, I greatly appreciate you for that. I'll never forget uh, your words of wisdom, your friendship, regardless of what we've faced. You've always been that, that sounding board and that, that guide for me. So I want to thank you. It's been a tremendous honor to serve along with you. Thank you so much. Ms. Campos, the floor is yours. I think the first thing I want to say is thank you to all of you for giving me the opportunity to be able to be a partner with you as we move forward in policy for the state of California. I'd also like to thank the individuals that serve and are the support staff for all of us here in this building. Without your support and your willingness to make sure that we have all the information that we need in a moment's time, we would not be able to do the work that we do. And I'd also like to thank my staff who some that are with me right now and some that have moved on to do greater things for the state of California. You're, I am only as good as the people that support me and believe in my leadership. And then I'd like to thank my family. And I'd like to first thank my son. And why I say that, when I came to this institution, my son Jack was two years old. And before I made the decision to run and come here, I talked to my family and I said, you know, I have a son, he's two years old. I'm not sure if I should do this, but my passion for this work is so deep. I love doing this work. I love serving the people that I represent. It brings me alive. And the one word that I'm so proud of and how people describe me is that I'm a fighter. When you believe in something, it's just a natural instinct to fight. And so when I'm passionate about something that I love, I'm going to do everything possible to make sure that we win that. Because the people that I represent, and I know like many of you represent, send you up here for one reason to be their voice, to fight for their issues, to bring whatever it is that they want home. And I remember one individual that said to me, I may not agree with you, but I trust you. And trust is everything. And how does this go back to my son? 
the last time I spoke to my son about my traveling up here and being up here, I said to Jack, I said, Jack, you know, mom's term is coming to an end, and I may decide to do something different. And I know you're seven, he's now eight, but when I had this conversation, he was seven. I said, what do you want mom to do? Do you want me to be here with you all the time, or can I still do, I asked for permission, I said, can I still do what I love to do? My seven-year-old at that time said to me, Mama, I think you should do what makes you happy. Because what makes you happy makes me happy. So I say to you and to the mothers out there that are deciding whether they should run, because we have very few women in the assembly and even fewer in the Senate, that if this is your passion, your family will be okay with what you do. And I think this applies to the men as well that have young children. If this is your passion, your family will be okay. And at the end of the day, you are, great, you are raising better children for doing and leading by example for your passion. And to my constituents, thank you for the opportunity for the 16 years that you have allowed me to serve you on the local level and at the state level. And I thank you tremendously for believing in my leadership, for saying to me that I can be bold, that I can be fierce, and that I can speak my truth along with your truth. It is so important that we live our truth and we speak our truth. Thank you, colleagues, for the opportunity to be here, to serve with you, both in the same party and across the aisle. I've had the opportunity to make friends on both sides. And to my colleagues, six years. And I'll say it here so that I don't have to get up and speak to each one of you. It has been a privilege, a privilege, our first year, I always say to my, to my friends, they say, well, what were the best moments? I said, well, the first two years were the funnest moments because we were getting to know each other, getting to understand each other. And the last four years have been the most productive years because I had the opportunity to really get my drive and stride and be bold and create partnerships with people that have brought amazing bills forward that have transformed and will transform the lives of the people in the state of California. Thank you for this opportunity.